Welcome back to another Sports Not NFL conversation. And today we're joined by Ben Standig from The Athletic. He covers the Washington Commanders. You can follow him on x.com at Ben Standig. Also, he's the host of The Last Man Standig. I love the wordplay there. Podcast covering all of Washington sports. A veteran of covering all of Washington sports. We certainly appreciate you being with us here, Ben. Uh, Boy, the Commanders, they came out. I think most of the country took notice, of course, with the big win over the Bengals uh, on Monday night football. Now you look at the, the the commanders two and one atop the NFC East with along with the Eagles and the Eagles have not been exactly consistent. Uh, when you look at this team with a lot of us surprised by them, are you surprised by them? Is the organization organization surprised that with them being here they are rookie quarterback, new GM, new coach and Dan Quinn and they've come out and pretty played pretty dang well. Yeah, it's an interesting way to to, to contemplate. Thanks for, for thanks for having me on. The so on the one hand, so much weight of this organization came off over the last year or so. The the, the sale of the team from Dan Snyder to new owner Josh Harris. This past offseason, they bring Dan Quinn as coach, Adam Peters as GM, and they changed more than half the roster, all the coaching staff, all that kind of stuff. So we knew change was in the air. Then they draft Jaden Daniels. And you're like, okay, clearly now there is a new vibe, a new, all positive here. The, and so this is, is, is ascending. Just the question mm-hmm. was, would they be ascending by week three on Monday Night Football? Offensively, <laughs> they absolutely did. And I think, in fairness, it's probably a bit early for, for how we all saw it, even though all summer we saw Jaden Daniels being very impressive. But, you know, until it's one thing to do it in practice and training camp, but it's another thing to do it in that spot to throw that touchdown pass to Terry McLaurin as the, the game clincher, you know, just outside the two minute warning, perfect pass, just an incredible play. We've seen that from him. The defense is still pretty suspect. They're last in the league in third down conversions. They didn't stop Cincinnati at all. They just were fortunate enough to, you know, keep them uh, to, to some field goal opportunities where they kept scoring touchdowns. But offensively, they are looking really good with, with Daniels. The excitement level is absolutely there. And uh, yeah, I think everybody's really excited to see where this goes. Yeah, and, and the thing with and we'll talk about Jaden Daniels, obviously, because I was fortunate enough to see him in college when he was at Arizona State. My daughter was there, and the kid always seemed to be a l- little more mature than everybody else on the field, even as an 18-year-old true freshman playing, obviously, uh, down there for, for the Sun Devils. But you look at this, and you just had a great story go up on The Athletic where you talked about Uh, rookie quarterback, first three starts. Daniels, uh, the QB expected points, the EPA. He leads there with 36.4. He's second total EPA and EPA drop back to only Josh Allen. He's got an 80.3 completion. No, I did not misspeak. 80.3% completion rate. And to me, one of the most impressive things uh, when you look at this, Ben, is he's had no turnovers. Talk about Jaden Daniels. You watched him through camp, and obviously people – all of the words coming out of camp were that he looked really good. But like you said, you get into the NFL season when the pressure is high and the, the play is fast. But Jaden Daniels just looks like he belongs. He's growing. Yes, he's learning, too. But how impressive has this start been to watch for you? Yeah, well, look, you know, as a sports writer, skepticism is in my blood, right? So there's going to be some, you know, you can't annoy anybody yet. It, just quite off the bat, uh, they're going to be really good. And with Jaden Daniels, there was so much talk about is he going to be able to hold up physically, right? Took some, you know, cartoonish hits at LSU. Not the biggest mm-hmm. guy out there, and he's going to run. So you got to always be careful of that. But I think while all that conversation is fair, it did overshadow some of the more obvious stuff. Like the dude is really, really good. His downfield passing touch is fantastic. We saw that at LSU. We saw that this summer. We saw that on Monday night. Of against uh, against the Bengals, he's got uh, you know, the number one word. You know how like you do those word cloud things where like the word that's used the most in a story or a book or something is the biggest. With him, it would undoubtedly be, be poised. Mm. Everybody uses that because I don't think I, I even had to pull up the source the other day to figure out a new word to use besides that because it's something that everybody constantly talks about with this kid. Uh, when I was at the Senior Bowl this year, before they even drafted him, and I, I talked to some of his teammates, and they were like, he's got a quiet confidence about him. And you see that here with um, with Washington. The, the the veterans talk about in OTA is how some of the guys who are you know, pride themselves in being early morning risers, 
workers getting to the facility at 6 a.m. would say, yeah, that's cool, but he was already there before I even got there. And despite the fact he's the Heisman Trophy winner, the number two pick, all this hype, everybody also raves about his camaraderie in the locker room, that there's no, there's no ego, there's nothing in play there. It is just he's here, he's one of the guys. And, and just this, this the Wednesday, the first day of practice, they're practicing here in Arizona. Bobby Wagner, future Hall of Famer, has been around the league for a long time. He, he, he's become like a big brother with, for Jane Daniels. He said, you know, you wouldn't have known when you walked into the building that this kid had just been named NFC Offensive Player of the Week. Not a rookie, <laughs> Offensive Player of the Week. And Daniels has that vibe about him. So I think that's what's been so impressive about all of this. And then, again, the, the talent on the field has been great. Again, I don't know if any of us were going week three, look out. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, he seems to be ready for the moment. Uh, and he's been that since we've seen him here. Yeah, and that that leadership for a young guy, because being a young leader, because you have to be the leader, right, as a quarterback, but being a young player coming in, playing with other veterans, it's a different kind of thing, and it seems like he's made that transition so nicely. I think one of the important things, too, and you've covered the sport a long time, and maybe you'll agree with me here, is – is the right situation, right? So you talk about, look at Bryce Young. We could argue all day if Bryce Young is going to be a good quarterback or not, but he walked into a terrible situation in Carolina, and it's not much better right now. But you look at what's happened in Washington. You talked earlier about the ownership change. Then, of course, you bring in Adam Peters as GM. You have Dan Quinn as head coach. The whole thing has been changed over, so there's much more positive momentum there. But that situation that he walks into, including the surrounding cast on offense, at least right now, you talked about Terry McLaren, who came out, had a great game against Cincinnati but then you look at uh, Noah Brown the rookie and you look at Luke McCaffrey as well these are two other receivers so this this talented team and this situation that Jaden Daniels finds himself in that has also benefited him has it not it has I mean look uh, it's such a clean break from the end of the last regime that you come in with this you know again new coach new GM and owner who's now had the team for a year, but last year they really couldn't do that much from a fixing up standpoint. And to have the number two pick bring in this kid to be the, your new face of your franchise is great. But also the organization, how they've handled him, I guarantee there are places that would say, this kid, we've got to, we're not waiting to, to rebuild, reload, or whatever you want to say. We're going for it now. This team didn't do that. Yeah, they, they did sign some veterans. So some key free agents like a Frankie Louvu and a Bobby Wagner and an Austin Eckler, who unfortunately for them is going to be out this week. But they didn't force Daniels. We knew he was going to start, but they refused to name him the starter with Marcus Merritt around just because they didn't want to miss any steps, Dan Quinn said over and over again. So they have been patient with him. I remember the owner, Josh Harris, who was also owned the 76ers and the New Jersey Devils. He, you know, they took a team that won, took over a team that had won, well, last year won three games. And he said, look, we can get to 8-8 eight and eight or 8-9 eight and nine or whatever. We can get to 500, basically. That's easy. Winning, sustaining, and sustaining, that's the challenge. And they are taking the steps to do that by not forcing the issue. And that just works perfectly when you have a young quarterback. Not only does Daniels not seem to feel pressure, he must, mm -hmm. but it doesn't seem like it. But the um, they're not adding it to it. They're, they're, they're not saying we have to win today per se of course they want to and they're off to a good start but they're not you know that's the bigger goal is win consistently over time with the quarterback they hope will be here for years to come so uh yeah he couldn't have landed in a better spot they need more talent around him right i mean there's still sure. a lack of playmakers on offense and you know you can't get the shootouts every week they were lucky last week and to some extent to to allow 33 points to joe burrow no turnovers no punts and win on the road so <laughs> that's not going to happen every week you wouldn't think but at the same time that, you know, it's, it's a good sign for, for where they're at now, but also, again, they're not putting the cart before the horse. They're allowing him to develop as needed, and so far that's worked out for him and this team. And, and just great for Washington football fans just to have positive momentum, right? Just to have positive after all the things that have gone over the last several years with the organization. Nice to see that happen. So I feel really good for them. We talk about, too, with Jaden Daniels and his success. Obviously, part of that and what Dan Quinn did is he brought in Cliff Kingsbury. You look at now, he's going back, a little homecoming for him too, back to Arizona this weekend as well. But talk about um, how he's handled Jaden Daniels, the approach he's taken coming in, 
coming having worked with Caleb Williams last year at USC in college, going in and taking a young quarterback like Daniels and and really getting him to a point where they're asking him to do what he needs to do, but perhaps not pushing him too hard. Talk about Cling Kingsbury's approach there and how well that's worked. Yeah, it's interesting, right? So this is a matchup. This game is a matchup between the first quarterback that Cliff Kingsbury had in the pros and Kyler Murray. Now he's got Jaden Daniels. And, you know, there were some obviously some highs with the Cardinals, but he was out after four years because it didn't go exactly as everybody planned. One thing that was often said by uh, film analysts or whomever, football analysts, was that he was a little too predictable with how he did certain things. Like, for example, having his ex receiver predominantly be on the left side of the field, stuff like that. He, though, early on in, I think back in May, so like during OTAs, he talked about how he didn't come into this year trying to plan for the fifth year of the Arizona Cardinals. He came in trying to mm -hmm. plan for the first year with the Commanders. And you hear stuff like that, and you're like, all right, well, we'll see what happens. And I think the other game was a good example. Of, of that he is catering to what Jaden Daniels does best obviously the, the you know the read options is, is a big deal for him uh the the, the touchdown pass to Terry McLaurin on the essentially game clinching play the ex receiver he was on the right side of the field that time and and Kingsbury's listening to Terry to Jaden for what they're seeing out there he's not just assuming that he's got all the answers from the sideline he's trusting the rookie as well as the, the better receiver and, and and that helped guide that play in particular, but other other aspects of the of the game as well. So yeah, I mean, so far so good. You know, again, like here, it's only week three. It feels like you know we're here. It's week three <laughs> plus twenty years of garbage, more or less. So it, 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 we're excited that it's something new and different. But at the same time, we'll see. But yeah, so far so good. Kingsbury has done a, a really good job of, of taking the, the pieces that are there. I don't want to say turning lemons into lemonade because that's too much. That's too insulting. But, you know, <laughs> he doesn't have all star cast on the line or at the playmakers. And yet with Daniels, he's making it work so far. Yeah, and it's 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 just great to like I said to see that positive impact and to see them move forward and and to see Kingsbury too right to your point about not trying to recreate what he did last time but instead start fresh and start new because I'm sure in the future he'd probably like a chance to be a head coach again uh, and certainly he's taking the right approach with this young quarterback. You talk about Dan Quinn now and coming in and how this organization has changed. Talk a little bit about him coming in as coach, the culture he's established because that's what they had to do. They had to reestablish culture in every way not only the front office support staff and all that but also the team and here you have dan quinn coming in ob obviously with the, the defensive pedigree that he's had and what he was able to do in dallas then he comes to washington what has that been like and how has that benefited this team like you said that's going to stumble they'll have their their speed bumps and they still need more talent but but why has he been a good fit for this team and where they're at right now yeah so back in january when they made this hire i think some people, some fans, and some people around the league thought Washington should have gone for an offensive-minded, more of a younger, modern guy. You know, everybody talks constantly about this 2013 staff that was here that had Kyle Shanahan, Sean McVay, Matt LaFleur, Mike McDaniel, and blah, 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 and they got away, and they were all babies for the most part, except for Kyle. So, <laughs> so, so it's been overstated. But the point is, you had a chance to – here's your chance to now sort of right that wrong, get an offensive guy. Instead, they ended up with an, an older guy – older, relatively speaking, uh, in, in Dan Quinn, who's on the defensive side. But I think the key that maybe they looked at other, they looked at other options for sure. But I think one key people were underestimating is this thing needed to be fixed from the bottom up. It's not just a matter of what's the scheme and how, how precious an offensive playbook needs to be. It's this place has been rotten to the core because of the ownership and just had you know all the losing leads to some bad culture that kind of stuff and he's come in here and one you know dan quinn likes to talk about people's superpowers but his superpower is clearly a connector of people that he's able to get everybody on not just on the same page but give them the 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 the, the comfort to understand hey we're all in this together i you know i value you as a, as not just this guy who's gonna you know sack quarterbacks or catch passes down the field and if you don't do those things get out it's the it's the people and all that connection i mean they've talked to collectively about how, how such a good vibe you know tress way their punter who has not punted in the last two games because the offense <laughs> has been that good he's also the longest tenured player on the team and yesterday he talked to us or wednesday he talked to us and said hey 
you know, I've been around here for a while. It is so much fun coming to work right now. We mm -hmm. are really having um, a good time here. And, and he's, you know, that that's kind of the vibe of this team right now. Yeah, that and that's great too because that's what you want, right? You want these guys loose and able to focus on what they need to do, which is the game. And and like you said, defense needs some work. You still need some work on the offense, but uh, they're playing right now really well. They got an opportunity now against against the Cardinals. And if you look at their schedule, obviously somewhat favorable there. They got some tough matchups, but if they can string these wins together and the confidence grows, uh, who knows what could happen? Especially that NFC East and the Eagles are unknown. The Giants, you know, up and down. Who knows what's going on there? Uh, and Dallas, of course. So we'll see where it all ends up, but it's exciting to watch and, and certainly we'll keep track of it through you. Make sure you read Ben up on The Athletic, of course, covering the Washington Commanders. Ben, thank you so much for spending so much time with us today. 